Hey folks, welcome to Ann Arbor, uh, the site of, uh, of a game that was not pretty for IU on defense, a, a really fun game on offense. I'm here with Mike Miller of the Herald Times, um, as obviously Zach is no longer... Uh, he's no longer with us. Yeah, I, I don't want to say, is, it he, sounds is morbid. Okay? <laughs> he's, he's no longer a part of Inside Indiana Overtime, or as Mike calls it, Inside Indiana, it was, Overdrive. It was, at one point it was Overdrive. It was, it it was, was not. It was never. It was never it was Overdrive. Never. Our local, uh, our loyal mm -hmm. listeners can, can tell you that. Um, and we're also here late enough where the vacuum cleaners are going, so we'll it's, try and speak up a little bit. Um, but, but this game, obviously, you know, it's 63-47. Um, Indiana loses to Michigan in a game that, that just, uh, they're just trading blow for blow. It, it was... It, it, it was insane, really. I mean, it, it, it left me exhausted. I, there, there's no time between scores, it seemed like. Um, and it was, it was almost unlike anything I've ever seen. I, I mean, have you, have you seen a game like this in a, a while? I mean, No, and, and it's, it's crazy just thinking about all the records Michigan set today offensively and the fact that, you know, with six, seven minutes left in the game, you know, I use right there in it. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's a two-point game with six or however many minutes left. I mean, this yeah. is a game late in the fourth quarter. Um, and it's great. I mean, you look at what Michigan did offensively. What is it? They 750 total yards, and IU had 500, but they're outgained by 200 yards. It's crazy. I mean, like you said, I mean, up and down the field all day. I'm exhausted. It was it was insane. I think that's the word for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and and, and of those of those yards, 580 of them came from Devin Gardner, uh, who you know all week Michigan defensive players were saying that they wanted to key in and stop him um, from running the ball, which I mean they they limited him to I think. 80 yards of rushing, yeah, but they still they allowed him to put the, to pass for over 500 yards. So they, I mean, they tried to take something away from Michigan, but then they they gave them this huge passing game, and also I I think um, Michigan also ran for a couple hundred yards. I mean, they they just they tried to take away something from Michigan and ended up not really taking away anything. Ran for uh, 250 yards, basically. Yeah, yeah. So and I mean, can this? Can this defense kind of, and maybe this is a little extreme for only midway through the season, but I mean, can this defense be saved? Do you think? Do you think they can still kind of salvage um, the season defensively? I, that's a good question. I think everyone's trying to answer that right now. Um, you know, you just look at the personnel. I mean, it's a group that they're trying to grow with, but at this point, you know, it's just not working. Like you said, I mean, they tried to take away the running game, but that just opened up one on one for uh, Jeremy Gallon on the outside, and he just totally exploited it all day long. Yeah, I mean, Big Ten no, record. Yeah, no answers for that. No answers whatsoever. So, I mean, you sort of tip your cap and say, okay, they're trying to solve the running problem, which is just plague them all year long. Teams are running for just crazy numbers against them. And yet, you know, you just watch, you know, it just backfires on them pretty much. Yeah. So, I, can it be saved? I don't think so. But that's the crazy thing. I, you know, they, they still have a chance to win out at home and really achieve the mm -hmm. goal of becoming bowl eligible with three wins with the remaining three home games. So, um, you know, I don't know if the defense can be saved. I don't know how much they can improve, but you know the offense I think is going to keep them in position mm -hmm. where they can still you know you know cross off some goals in their list this year. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and I think coming into the season, the the idea was, or coming into the past couple seasons, the idea was that if the Indiana def defense can be good enough, if they can get a stop every now and then, then the offense will score enough. I mean, they they average the, the IU offense averages I think forty two points a game. They average. Coming into this game, they averaged 30 points in losses this season, which is incredible that a team that that has that kind of offensive potency has lost four games. Um, and and we saw tonight, you know, Tim Bennett, who who came into today, really looking like the brightest spot on this on this defense, leading the country in pass breakups. Uh, physical guy, he he, when he hits you, you, you know it. He, I mean, he, he and even tonight he had a couple big hits. One of them was obviously illegal on Devin Gardner in the end zone. But tonight we saw Tim Bennett get burned uh, quite often, actually, by Jeremy Gallon, um, and it, you know a lot of that is because the safeties kind of had to stay in the box and, and try and guard against that run. But it seemed like it, you know at a certain point you would want to adjust that game plan to take away Gallon, um, and obviously it, nothing they tried worked. I mean, Gallon caught for over 360 yards, destroyed the Michigan record for a single game, destroyed the Big Ten record, and came within 40, I think, of the. Uh, NCAA record, but uh, on the other side of the ball, you know, Indiana obviously put up 47 points, uh, and a lot of that was with, was with Trey Roberson at quarterback. Uh, yeah. Nate Sudfeld started uh, as he as he has since uh, I think the Bowling Green game, but more and more the past couple of weeks we've seen Trey Roberson come in. I mean, what did you see from Roberson, and do you think that 
he could possibly be the starter, be the guy in the next couple weeks? It's such a tough question because tonight from Roberson, we saw what we probably saw the last game. You know, we're we're seeing a Mm -hmm. lot of good stuff from him. You know, he's you know he's starting to get to that high water mark where he's playing really well and he's sort of making it tough. You know, situationally, you know, when to use Roberson, when to use Sudfeld. Obviously, they went to him tonight when they needed you know a shot in the arm to sort of you know find some momentum offensively, and they certainly got that in the second half. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm guessing they probably stick with Sudfeld as the starter, but you know, I'm, I'm guessing also that you're going to see continue to see a lot, a lot of trade. I don't. I think this continues to be a bit of a controversy. Don't call it a controversy, but it's <laughs> certainly what it is. Right, right. It's it's something that's lasted, you know, for the past uh, couple years. Is is IU trying to balance multiple quarterbacks? Obviously, last year it was between Cam Kaufman and Nate Sudfeld, and this year it's between Roberson and Sudfeld. And what, what we saw from Sudfeld early on. Uh, just just kind of blew me away in, in terms of what he can do. But the past couple of weeks on the road here at, at the two Michigan schools, um, you know, I don't know if he looks rattled or if he, he's just, there's just something a little off where Roberson comes in and it just seems like he is a, maybe a little bit more calm, maybe a little bit more prepared for, I guess, what, what this environment can be, uh, which is kind of odd because Roberson didn't play in Big Ten play last year uh, and Sudfeld did a little bit. But uh, maybe there's something relaxing, or maybe there's less pressure on a player when he's coming off the bench, when he's not asked to start a game and set the tone or something like that. Uh, but uh, Sud- or, uh, Roberson, I think, set career highs in, in passing touchdowns with three, overall touchdowns with four. Uh, he had a really, nice, really really nice touchdown run uh, that I think yeah. was for 15 yards yep. somewhat late in the game. Uh, and, and he made a couple, there have been a couple times where uh, Roberson has has played well, but last week we saw him miss a, a few deep throws. Tonight he was making a couple. I mean, he, he made um, a, a nice one, I think, to to Shane Wynn that was for thirty yards. Yep. Um, there was a pass to to Kofi Hughes that was a sixty seven yard touchdown, but it it wasn't a great pass, but it was a fantastic catch. Uh, if you haven't seen the tape, go see that for the second straight week. Kofi Hughes makes a absolutely insane catch uh, for a touchdown, but. I mean, going forward, obviously, uh, Indiana doesn't play next week. They have a bye. Then they uh, come home and play Minnesota. Um, this this bye week comes at a pretty good time, it seems like. It seems like a lot of their problems were exposed tonight, especially defensively, uh, and they'd be able to, to work on the ne- them the next couple of weeks. But, um, you know, Mike, what what can they do over the next couple of weeks, I guess? Um, and you kind of touched on this earlier that they have some winnable games ahead of them. What do you see in the final five games of the regular season for them? Boy, it's it's wide open right now. I mean, they're going to come back against Minnesota, and I think Minnesota's probably a little better than we thought they were, you know, earlier on in the year. So, and, and you know, I, you know, you look at the the three home games that are really their ticket to a bowl. Um, really, of those three, the Illinois game is probably the one that was, it's going to come down to. I, I think mm. at least prior to today, we probably thought the Minnesota game was a winnable game. Purdue certainly still looks like yeah. a winnable game. Illinois was sort of the I guess the wild card of the group. Um, but yeah, I, I, it, it's it's a big uh, two weeks of preparation here for this team. This is crunch time for them. This is this is the make or break uh, point of the year, and it, it's just you know today was like you said insane. I mean there there were some positives in this one. I mean the sixty seven yard touchdown grab by Hughes. This place got quiet. One hundred nine thousand mm. people got quiet after that. I mean this was a ball game for a few minutes here in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So I mean it's just and you look at the scoreboard and they give up you know, 750 yards 60 some points I mean it's just something's got to give here eventually for this team and even if they get to a bowl I mean they, they just they have to get over the hump defensively they have to mm-hmm. do something and I think some serious questions have to be sort of posed to the coaching staff just about you know coaching personnel and whether a change needs to be made I mean I think it's reached the point where you know Kevin Wilson has to take a good hard look at his staff and really evaluate what they're doing yeah I I, I do agree with that 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 there's something deeper here that might you might need a shakeup, you know, not not necessarily right now, but maybe during the off season, you might want to try and do something, either shift responsibilities or uh, something like that. Um, but w- along with Indiana, we will be off uh, next Saturday. We-, we won't be with you, but in two weeks, we'll be back uh, at Memorial Stadium. Well, I will be. I, I mean, I don't know if Mike's going to be on overtime, overdrive, overdrive. Whatever. I'll be on overdrive. Um, he might film his own his own I'm video and call it Mike, overdrive. Mike Miller overdrive. <laughs> You'll be my first guest. Awesome. That's an honor. Um, but until then, um, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, I'm Alex McCarthy. This is Mike Miller, and this has been Inside Indiana Overtime. Over-